There's no point in saying that we will trust in God if we don't try to do what he says, nor does it make sense to try to please him just a little if we are not doing it fully. That's why he insisted so much on repentance, so that we can completely transform ourselves. And it is this repentance, this first move in the right direction, that is the first step towards sanctification. Excerpt from the book, Mere Christianity. Welcome to another video from Soulful Devotions, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. There is much discussion surrounding the appropriate conduct and behavior for Christians and the virtues we should adopt to lead a life close to God. However, there is less emphasis on the detrimental habits that many of us already possess, which can negatively impact our faith and overall well-being. In this video, I will discuss which habits to avoid in order to live a fulfilling life aligned with God's will. As it says in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. First habit, resistance to change. Resistance to change is a significant challenge that can limit a Christian's life in various areas, including spiritual, emotional, and relational. In Christianity, change is inevitable and often a sign of spiritual growth and transformation. When Christians resist change, they may face spiritual stagnation, missing out on new experiences and understandings that stimulate faith. Resistance can also result in lost opportunities to serve the community, as the Spirit often calls us out of our comfort zones for new ministries and missions. Additionally, the inability to adapt to changes can cause tensions and conflicts in relationships, leading to isolation and the deterioration of important connections. A Christian resistant to change can seem outdated and irrelevant, compromising the effectiveness of their testimony. Therefore, it is essential to embrace change for spiritual growth, effective ministry, and a vibrant testimony. Christians are encouraged to remain open to the movement of the Spirit, seeing change as an opportunity for growth, transformation, and faithful living. The second habit to reconsider is promoting skepticism as a virtue, especially when it leads to distrust in the Christian faith. The Bible encourages having faith, even without seeing or fully understanding. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith is a trust in God and His promises, transcending what is evident to human eyes. Skepticism, misunderstood as cynicism or total disbelief, can be a virtue if seen as a questioning and investigative approach. In this context, skepticism does not reject the truth, but rigorously seeks it, requiring evidence and logical reasoning before accepting any claim. This is valuable in spirituality, science and daily matters promoting deep understanding and preventing blind acceptance of false ideas. Lewis, initially an atheist, had a questioning and analytical mind that led him to doubt both atheism and materialism. He sought answers to fundamental questions about the universe and human existence, recognizing the limitations of materialism and naturalism. In explaining aspects such as morality, beauty, love, and spirituality. Influenced by friends, especially J.R.R. Tolkien, Lewis was encouraged to reevaluate Christianity, not just as a morality, but as a historical truth and divine revelation. Through conversations and debates, he applied his intellectual rigor to examine the claims of Christianity. Lewis concluded that the Christian faith offered a more coherent and satisfying worldview than atheism or agnosticism, 
being particularly attracted to the idea of God's incarnation in Jesus Christ. For him, Christianity made logical sense and met the human longing for something beyond the material. His conversion was gradual, resulting from questioning, reflection and acceptance and he described this process as a reluctant but inevitable transition to the Christian faith. The third habit to consider changing is the neglect of spiritual disciplines. There are several, such as prayer, reading and meditating on the Bible, fasting, service, praising God, confession, communion, and seeking simplicity. Highlighting the most important ones, according to Lewis, he emphasizes prayer, meditation, and active participation in a faith community as essential in the Christian journey. These practices bring us closer to God, reveal His plan, and cultivate a deep relationship with Him. Prayer is seen as the soul's breath, a continuous dialogue with the Creator that sustains us in life. It is not just about requests or thanks, but cultivating a continuous relationship, sharing thoughts, fears, desires and gratitude, allowing us to feel his presence and receive direction, comfort and peace. Regular prayer strengthens faith and helps maintain focus on God, especially in difficult times. Studying the scriptures nourishes our minds and spirits, offering guidance, comfort and wisdom. It is fundamental for any Christian who wants to grow in faith, as the scriptures are God's living and active word, relevant to our lives today. By diligently studying the Bible, we can understand Jesus' teachings, the history of God's people, and the principles that guide our behavior and decisions. This equips us with wisdom to face life's challenges and share our faith in an informed and convincing manner. Meditation allows us to reflect deeply on our life and purpose, promoting inner peace and clarity. In Christian meditation, we focus on God, the scriptures, God's works in creation, or the life of Christ. This helps us slow down amid the hustle and bustle of modern life and hear God's still small voice, enriching our spiritual understanding and transforming our way of living. Participating in a faith community connects us with other believers, allowing us to share journeys, learnings and mutual support. The Christian faith should not be lived in isolation. Participation in a community offers support, encouragement and opportunities to grow spiritually together with others. In these communities, we share struggles, celebrate joys and learn from each other through collective worship, group Bible study and community activities. We remember that we are part of a larger body, the church, called to reflect Christ's love in the world. Neglecting spiritual disciplines means giving up the tools for our growth and strengthening in faith. Without these practices, our connection with God can become superficial, our understanding of his will unclear, and our ability to face adversities with grace and courage diminished. The fourth habit to reconsider is rampant consumerism, which goes against the principles upheld by Lewis and Christian tradition Consumerism can divert a person's spiritual purpose, becoming an idol that occupies the center of life and displaces God. When accumulating material goods becomes the priority, spiritual purpose and the pursuit of a deep relationship with God can be neglected. According to Matthew 6:24, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. Consumerism alters values, promoting materialism, greed, and selfishness. Contrary to Christian teachings of contentment, generosity, and love for others, it encourages a mindset of constant dissatisfaction, incompatible with the gratitude found in God. Philippians 4:11, 13 highlights, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. 
I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Moreover, consumerism creates barriers to altruism and generosity. Focusing on accumulating wealth can lead to neglecting others' needs, hindering the practice of generosity and love for others. Essential in Christianity. Mark 12.31 teaches, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Rampant consumerism results in a sense of emptiness and spiritual dissatisfaction. The incessant pursuit of material goods never fully satisfies human spiritual and emotional needs. Only an intimate relationship with God offers true satisfaction and purpose. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Hebrews 13, 5 exhorts us to keep our lives free from the love of money and be content with what we have, for God has promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. The fifth habit to reconsider is indifference to others. This can manifest in various ways, from not offering help when possible, to ignoring others' emotional or physical needs. In an interconnected world where news about injustices and suffering is easily accessible, it is easy to fall into apathy or disinterest, justifying inaction by the feeling that the problem is too big or that one person's effort won't make a difference. From a Christian perspective, indifference is problematic for several reasons. Firstly, it directly contradicts Jesus' second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. This commandment demands a proactive attitude of care and compassion, leaving no room for indifference. Additionally, indifference weakens the community. Christianity emphasizes the importance of community and mutual support, reminding us that we are all members of one body in Christ. The practice of spiritual disciplines, as mentioned earlier, is essential to strengthen faith, family, community and society. These disciplines are our tools to confront evil and make the world a better place. Jesus Christ lived and taught the antidote to indifference, active compassion. He approached the marginalized, healed the sick and fed the hungry, demonstrating a love that moves toward others regardless of their status or condition. Society's indifference to Jesus and his actions culminated in his crucifixion, the ultimate act of rejection. Through his example and sacrifice, Jesus highlighted the seriousness of indifference and the call to combat it with love and action. The sixth habit to identify and eradicate is pride. Lewis believed that pride is the greatest obstacle between man and God. When someone places themselves at the center of their own universe, they displace God from that position, making it difficult to submit to his will and recognize dependence on him, creating a barrier in the essential relationship for spiritual life and hindering the flow of divine grace. Proverbs 16:18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride acts as a catalyst for all other sins, establishing itself as a mental posture contrary to the divine essence. It feeds on comparison and the pleasure of seeing oneself as superior, creating an obsessive need to stand out. Even when much is achieved, there is an insatiable thirst for more, reinforcing the position of power. The proud person's gaze, always from above, reflects judgment and disdain, isolating them from others and spiritual elevation. This perspective of superiority obscures the vision of a deep connection with the sacred, focusing on pride we lose the ability to lift our eyes to the heavens, to what truly matters and transcends our earthly existence. Pride distances us from others and the possibility of a genuine encounter with the divine. 
For those seeking spiritual growth, recognizing and combating pride is fundamental. This involves cultivating humility, practicing empathy, and opening up to vulnerability, recognizing that we are all equal in our quest for meaning and connection. Only then can we divert our gaze from the deceptive reflection of pride and direct our vision upward, seeking a deeper understanding of the purpose of our journey and the constant presence of the sacred in our lives. The seventh habit to be re-evaluated and transformed is the lack of forgiveness. Lewis often emphasized forgiveness as essential for Christian life, reflecting the forgiveness that God offers us. Forgiveness is necessary for our spiritual and emotional liberation, freeing us from bitterness and allowing us to live in peace with ourselves and others. In the Christian context, forgiveness is not just recommended. It is a command that reflects the heart of the gospel. Jesus taught his followers to forgive, highlighting this practice in the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 7, 12. Refusing to forgive disobeys a central principle of Christianity and can lead to destructive consequences for the individual. Lack of forgiveness creates a barrier between the individual and God. In Christianity, forgiveness is an expression of divine love. By refusing to forgive, the Christian distances themselves from this love, harming their communion with God and limiting their ability to fully experience His grace and mercy. Resentment and bitterness are direct consequences of the inability to forgive. These feelings can consume a person, affecting their mental, physical and spiritual health. The Bible warns against bitterness in Hebrews 12.15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Resentment can poison all areas of a Christian's life, including their relationships, peace of mind, and ability to love themselves and others. The inability to forgive not only affects the individual's relationship with God, but can also destroy human relationships. Forgiveness is essential to heal and restore relationships. Without it, past offenses and hurts continue to grow preventing reconciliation and the building of trust. This can result in isolation, loneliness, and a destructive cycle of broken relationships. Refusing to forgive hinders personal and spiritual growth. Christianity sees forgiveness as an essential step in the process of sanctification, the journey of becoming more like Christ. Without the willingness to forgive, the Christian remains in a state of spiritual immaturity, unable to progress toward a deeper understanding of God's love and mercy. I invite you to pray with us at this moment, and the reason for the prayer is to ask God to give us the wisdom, courage and strength we need to do His will here on earth. Dear Heavenly Father, Today we gather in prayer, seeking your powerful and transforming presence in our lives. We feel the need for your strength, courage and wisdom to become better, stronger and more dedicated to your will. Lord, we open our hearts to embrace the change that brings growth and spiritual renewal. May resistance to change dissolve in your light and may we accept new opportunities with faith and trust. Help us to grow, to evolve, and to live in constant transformation, always seeking a deeper relationship with you. Father, fill our hearts with unwavering faith. May we fully trust in you, even when we do not understand the paths that are presented to us. May doubt and skepticism transform into a sincere quest for truth, guided by your loving and wise hand. Teach us to value and practice the spiritual disciplines that draw us closer to you. May prayer be our foundation, the study of your words our guide, 
and meditation a moment of encounter with you. May every act of service, praise, and communion be a reflection of our devotion and love for you. Lord, help us resist the temptations of consumerism and materialism. May we find true satisfaction in your presence instead of seeking happiness in material possessions. Teach us to live with simplicity and to share generously with those around us. Father, give us a compassionate heart attentive to the needs of others. May we never be indifferent to the suffering of others, but always ready to help and love. May your compassion guide our actions, and may we be instruments of your love in the world. Lord, deliver us from the pride that distances us from you and our brothers and sisters. May we be humble, recognizing our dependence on your grace and love. Teach us to value everyone, to practice empathy, and to be vulnerable in our spiritual journey. Finally, Father, fill our hearts with the spirit of forgiveness. May we release all bitterness and resentment, living in peace and harmony. May your love enable us to forgive, just as we have been forgiven, allowing us to experience the fullness of your grace and mercy. In the name of your love, we ask and thank you, confident that you are always with us. Amen. Thank you to everyone who watched our video to the end and prayed with us. We are very happy to share our content with you. I hope this video has been very helpful in your spiritual journey. May God bless each one of you and your families. See you in the next video.